Oh, how far microtransactions have come since the horse armor days. And oh, how companies continue to try to push the boundaries so they can continue normalizing things that, you know, once upon a time were considered egregious and uh, unacceptable. But now, you know, they've managed to somehow inchworm their way, boil the frog slowly, if you will, in such a manner that the frog doesn't even know it's getting boiled. Now, they did push too much in certain areas. Pay-to-win loot boxes are no longer a big thing, at least in the AAA gaming landscape, though in mobile gaming, pay-to-win loot boxes are still everywhere. But companies are still trying to find ways to, you know, push how far they can go with microtransactions, how much they can affect gameplay, what schemes they can come up with in order to incentivize people to spend additional money on things that will offer them emotional or gameplay value. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're at a point where companies are thinking to themselves, what if we took the cosmetics only microtransactions that have become normalized, that people seem to be able to tolerate, and add pay-to-win elements to the skins themselves, to the cosmetics themselves, rather than selling the pay-to-win directly to the players. This seems to be the next scheme that uh, companies are trying to push, or at the very least, Call of Duty. Call of Duty Warzone 2.0, for those who don't know, has this mode called DMZ. This is essentially their extraction shooter mode, which involves seeing various players and different squads going in, looting stuff, getting out and then that loot will allow them to essentially get, have an advantage in the next round or power up for the next round. This is an interesting combination of both PvE and PvP. You'll be encountering both other real players as well as AI and it's this really unpredictable mode where you have to play really tactically and defensively and be really careful because if you die everything that you have looted, all of the advantages that you have given yourself by finding things throughout the world or uh, by winning certain rounds, I mean, all of that will be gone. You'll be dropping all those things. And so it's high risk, high reward. Uh, it's a genre that's becoming a lot more popular and Call of Duty is kind of trying to be at the forefront of this. And among the things that Call of Duty likes to sell to players are cosmetic microtransactions, but for Warzone 2.0's DMZ mode, the cosmetics, the cool looking stuff are currently under fire, facing a lot of backlash and criticism because these premium skins that they're selling with upcoming patches and whatnot include unfair game-breaking bonuses that essentially appear to turn DMZ into a virtual pay-to-win game. The way Activision is doing this is by adding what are called DMZ bonus effects to premium cosmetics, essentially special effects, at which point the skins are no longer cosmetic only, but rather they have tangible gameplay effects that can grant players who spend that additional money significant advantages. So one of the gameplay elements of Call of Duty's DMZ mode are backpacks, which you can upgrade as you loot stuff in an extraction shooter round, and there are three sizes, small, medium, and large. And as you get better sized backpacks, you essentially can carry more gear, which is an important aspect of the gameplay of this game, as carrying more gear just allows you to be more versatile, have just more tools with you. Now, normally the way it works is that after you die, again, one of the mechanics of extraction shooters is if you die, you lose everything. And with backpacks, it is reduced to the starting size of small. And this element of things resetting after you die is a pillar of extraction shooters. It's what makes them so intense. It's what makes the whole high risk, high reward element shine. But with something like the Bomb Squad Premium Cosmetic Bundle, that important aspect of the gameplay loop of DMZ and Extraction Shooters is compromised because what this particular skin does is give you this special bonus where when you die, instead of your backpack getting reset to small as it traditionally should be, instead you will start with a medium backpack. This skin bundle is offering players a free medium backpack at the start. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to do the math here. Spend money in the shop and you can always be reset after death to a better place than those who don't. These skins essentially give you a nice early game boost while also making it so that when you die, you don't suffer for the consequences as much. It is a complete spit in the face to a core pillar of the gameplay loop. The way things are supposed to play out is that everyone starts at an even playing field and when you do earn good gear, it's because you played the game and you play the game well. It's your reward for you know knowing what you're doing. But with the Bomb Squad skin, the way Kotaku puts it aptly is that it grants you a permanent free leg up to its owner, letting them acquire more loot and thus always outpacing someone who hasn't purchased said skin. And based on what 
players have data mined, things could get a lot worse if we let this trend be normalized as there are already plans to introduce additional premium cosmetic skins with significant gameplay advantage effects. So for example, this right here is what data miners found, a premium skin called Thorns Out that will give you a free UAV upon deployment. You'll have this at the start of a round and when you die, this is just something that will be with you. And this is a big deal. UAVs are a very useful tool that traditionally you have to go out into the field and loot. You have to earn your UAVs, but with this skin, you just kind of have it at the start of a match or a round. UAVs are seriously effective tactical equipment in Call of Duty. Pop one and enemies, players, or bots will light up on your map. PvP and DMZ is often a game of cat and mouse, and so by having a UAV and deploying it, you can get a lot of great tactical knowledge, but you have to earn that traditionally, whereas with this skin, you just get to have that tactical advantage from the outset just because you spent more money on this game by purchasing this skin. It's straight up pay to win in a multiplayer competitive environment at that. Data miners also uncover the possibility of a premium skin bonus that would involve players just automatically having free two plate armor vests from the outset uh, upon deployment instead of your traditional one plate. And so this is kind of the scheme that Warzone DMZ wants to start delving into. They're hoping that people just accept this, that they'll be able to ride out the backlash enough where eventually people stop talking about it, will accept it as just normal. This is the next microtransaction scheme that Activision is pushing for. Their thought process is, well, obviously we don't want to sell people pay to win stuff directly because then it's going to generate backlash because of the way pay to win has been so stigmatized. So why don't we sneak pay to win into cosmetics since cosmetics have become so accepted. But I really hope that people understand that this is just blatantly pay to win. This is very much Activision testing the waters. And if people buy this stuff on mass and it proves to be financially successful despite backlash, then guess what? They're going to keep doing this. And if Activision succeeds at this, guess what? It's going to draw the attention of other companies who are going to look at this scheme and go, ooh, maybe we could do the same. If they can pull it off, why can't we? And then this will just become a thing in multiplayer games with microtransactions moving forward. And then when that becomes normalized, companies will have pushed the envelope and move the goalpost successfully. They'll draw a new line and then they'll try to take a step or two beyond that line, see what they can get away with and try to move that line even more or take two steps forward, one step back. Now, in the DMZ subreddit, you'll already find people recognizing all of this as pay to win. New DMZ bundle is blatantly pay to win, says this Reddit user on the DMZ subreddit. Here's somebody else saying, PSA, do not buy the pay to win bundles in the store. And then lastly, we have this individual saying DMZ is dead, pay to win free UAV bundle, pointing out the thorns out, special effect of just giving you a UAV when you are deployed. And then you've got uh, new salads like Charlie Intel, who cover shooters and especially Call of Duty, tweeting out things like there have been several bundles added with season three of Warzone 2.0 that give players a benefit in DMZ, practically making DMZ a pay to win experience, like blatantly so. Activision should absolutely reconsider and stop attacking attempting to grab sales based on pay-to-win mechanics. This is leaning very similar to locking weapons and supply drops back in the day. It certainly is, and it goes to show that companies are not done with trying to normalize pay-to-win. They've just kind of backed away. They've let things simmer down. They regrouped, and now they're trying other methods, other sneaky ways though I'd argue that this is not even particularly sneaky. These bonus effects are so blatantly powerful, people are noticing. But again, regardless of whether people notice or not, regardless of whether there's mass backlash or not, if enough people end up buying this stuff and the backlash doesn't prove to be substantial enough to have a negative impact on the company's financial bottom line, then this will become the new normal. So for Call of Duty players, speak with your wallet and keep calling this out until it's completely eradicated. Don't let this become the new normal. This right here is utterly and completely unacceptable, and Activision should be ashamed that they even thought about this one. Or at the very least, that's one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Activision's attempt here to try to push for cosmetics that feature pay-to-win effects. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.